First problem. I don't deposited 5000 rupees in a bank which compounds interest half yearly and Mohan deposited the same amount in another bank which compounds interest quarterly. The annual rate of interest is 6% at both the banks. How much more would Mohan get after one year? Welcome to Maths Companion. In the last video, we have discussed the section another method. We have seen that if P rupees is invested in a scheme giving R% percent interest compounded annually, then the amount after N years is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. There was a homework. Let us do it now. Varun took out a loan of 25,000 rupees from a bank which charges 11% interest compounded annually. He paid back 10,000 rupees after 2 years. How much should he pay after one more year to settle the loan? He took out a loan of 25,000, that means P is 25,000. Rate of interest is 11%, that is R is 11%. He paid back 10,000 rupees after 2 years. So let us find the amount after 2 years, that is let us take N as 2. The amount after N years is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Let us replace each letter by the corresponding value. P is 25,000, R is 11 and N is 2. So this can be written as 25,000 into 1 plus 11 by 100 all square. 1 plus 11 by 100 is 111 by 100. So this can be written as 25,000 into 111 by 100 all square. 111 by 100 all square is 111 by 100 into 111 by 100. So this can be written as 25,000 into 111 by 100 into 111 by 100. Let us cancel three zeros from numerator and denominator. What remains now? 25 into 111 into 111 divided by 10. Let us multiply 111 by 111 at first. We get 12,321. Again it should be multiplied by 25. Then we get 308,025. Now we have to divide this by 10. Then we get 30,802.5. This means 30,800 rupees and 50 paise. So it will be rounded and the amount is 30,803 rupees. He paid back 10,000 after 2 years. Now the third year's balance is amount after 2 years minus the amount paid or 30,803 minus 10,000 and that is equal to 20,803. This is the third year's balance. After one more year he has to pay interest again. The rate of interest is 11%. Therefore, third year's interest is 20,803 into 11 by 100. Let us multiply 20,803 by 11 and we get 2,28,833. Now it should be divided by 100. Then we get 2,288.33. This means 2,288 rupees 0.33 paise. It will be rounded and the interest is 2,288 rupees. After 3 years, he has to pay 3rd years balance and 3rd years interest. That is, the amount to be paid is 20,803 plus 2,288 and that is equal to 23,091 rupees. That means after 3 years, he has to pay 23,091 rupees to settle the loan. Today, let us learn the next section, changing times. We have seen that while computing compound interest, interest is added to the principal after every year. There are schemes in which interest is added to the principal after every six months. It is called half yearly compounding. Let us take an example. Ambuli deposited 12,000 rupees in a bank which pays interest compounded half yearly. The annual rate of interest is 8%. How much would she get back after one year? She deposit 12,000 rupees, that is P is 12,000. 
the annual rate of interest is 8%. Since interest is compounded half yearly, interest has to be calculated twice a year. Since interest is 8% each year, it is 4% for 6 months. That means we have to take R as 4%. We have to find the amount after 1 year. In 1 year, how many half years are there? There are 2 half years. That means N equal to 2. The amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Here P is 12,000, R is 4 and N is 2. Replacing we get 12,000 into 1 plus 4 by 100 all square. 1 plus 4 by 100 is 104 by 100. So this can be written as 12,000 into 104 by 100 all square. 104 by 100 all square is 104 by 100 into 104 by 100. So this can be written as 12,000 into 104 by 100 into 104 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from numerator and denominator. We can cancel one more zero from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 12 into 104 into 104 divided by 10. Let us multiply 104 by 104 at first. Now we have to multiply it by 12. Then we get 1,29,792. Now we have to divide it by 10. Then we get 12,979.2. That means 12,979 rupees and 20 paise. Rounding the amount becomes 12,979 rupees. That is, the amount after one year is 12,979 rupees. Suppose in this problem we want to find how much umbilicates after one and a half years. How many half years are there in one and a half years? 3 half years. So we have to take n as 3 and we have to calculate. That is, the amount will be equal to 12,000 into 1 plus 4 by 100 all raised to 3. Simplifying, we will get the amount after one and a half years. Similarly, we can calculate the amounts after different periods of time. There are also schemes in which interest is added to the principal after every three months. Such a method is called quarterly compounding. Suppose Ambuli made her deposit in a bank which compound interest quarterly. How much would she get after one year? There are four quarter years in any year. That means N should be taken as 4. The rate of interest is 8% for an year. There are 4 quarter years in any year. Therefore, the rate of interest is 8 by 4 or 2% for every quarter year. So, taking R as 2 and N as 4, we can calculate the amount after 1 year. And that will be equal to 12,000 into 1 plus 2 by 100 all raised to 4. Simplifying, we will get the amount after one year. Now, let us do the problems on page 93. There are two persons, Arun and Mohan. Both of them deposit 5,000 rupees into different banks. The rate of interest is same, 6%. Both of them deposit for one year. For Arun, it is half yearly compounding. But for Mohan, it is quarterly compounding. We have to find how much more would Mohan get after one year. Let us take the case of Arun at first. He deposit 5000 rupees, that is P is 5000. Annual rate of interest is 6%, but for him it is half yearly compounding, therefore we can take R as 3. He deposit for 1 year, and there are 2 half years in any year, therefore N equal to 2. Amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Let us replace the letters by the corresponding values. P is 5000, R is 3, and N is 2. So this can be written as 5000 into 1 plus 3 by 100 all square. 
1 plus 3 by 100 is 103 by 100. So this can be written as 5000 into 103 by 100 all square. 103 by 100 all square is 103 by 100 into 103 by 100. So this can be written as 5000 into 103 by 100 into 103 by 100. Let us cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. We can cancel one more zero from both numerator and denominator. Now 1 5 is 5 and 2 5s are 10. What remains now? 103 into 103 divided by 2. Let us multiply 103 by 103. We get 10,609. Now let us divide it by 2. We get 5,304.5. That means 5,304 rupees 50 paise. Rounding the amount is 5,305 rupees. That means after one year, I don't get 5,305 rupees. Now let us take the case of Mohan. He also deposit 5,000 rupees. That is P is 5,000. Annual interest rate is 6%. For Mohan, it is quarterly compounding. Therefore, R is equal to 6 by 4 or 1.5. In a year, there are 4 quarter years. Therefore, N equal to 4. Amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Replacing the values, we get 5000 into 1 plus 1.5 by 100 all raised to 4. 1 plus 1.5 by 100 is 101.5 by 100. So, this can be written as 5000 into 101.5 by 100 all raised to 4. 101.5 by 100 all raised to 4 is 101.5 by 100 into 101.5 by 100 into 101.5 by 100 into 101.5 by 100. So we can write this as 5000 into 101.5 by 100 into 101.5 by 100 into 101.5 by 100 into 101.5 by 100. Let us cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. We can cancel one more zero from both numerator and denominator. Now 1 5 is 5 and 2 5s are 10. What remains now? 101.5 into 101.5 into 101.5 into 101.5 divided by 2 into 100 into 100. Let us multiply 101.5 by 101.5. Then we get 10,302.25. So the product of these two is also 10,302.5. So instead of multiplying all these together, we can multiply 10,302.25 by itself. Because the product of these two is 10,302.25. The product of these two is also 10,302.25. And multiplying we get 10 crore 61 lakhs 36,355.0625. So we have multiplied all these together. Now let us divide this by 2. When we divide this by 2, we get 5 crore 30 lakhs 68,177.53125. Now it should be again divided by 100 into 100 or 10,000. When we divide this by 10,000, we get 5,306.81775325. This is approximately equal to 5,306 rupees and 81 paise. Rounding, we can take it as 5,307 rupees. That means after one year, Mohan will get 5,307 rupees. Arun will get only 5,305 rupees. That means Mohan will get 2 rupees more than Arun after 1 year. Now there is a homework. A person took out a loan of 16,000 rupees from a bank which charges interest compounded quarterly. The annual rate of interest is 10%. How much should he pay back after 9 months to settle the loan? We will discuss the remaining part in the next video. Till then, bye.